TV black box spotlight returns despite headlines claiming otherwise. Former Sunrise EP Michael Pell and Seven Part Ways and Nine Schedules Jeopardy to Die. Welcome to the podcast where people in the industry get their news recorded live in front of a streaming audience. This is TV Black Box. This is TV Black Box, bringing you the inside goss from the TV industry. Hello there, I'm Rob McKnight and this is TV Black Box. We do what we say on the tin. It's a TV Black Box. It's where all the information about television is stored and the people who are going to extract the Black Box tonight are TV presenter David Robbo Robinson. Hello, Robbo. Morning, everyone. Uh, great to be here. Can't wait to talk about TV because uh, look, it's going to be tough that there's not much that's happened over the past week. <laughs> so I'm sorry. we're probably going to be scratching the bottom of the barrel. We'll be stretching it. To... We'll be, we'll be, yeah. we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have to come yeah. up with a few uh, anecdotes and TV stories. Also joining us is the viewers advocate. You know him as Mulk. I know him as Mulky Mulk. Hello, Steve. We will make some shit up tonight, Rob. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to have you on board with the TV Black Box podcast. I'd like to start by acknowledging the Dark and Jung mob, the land on which I'm coming to you from, and uh, uh, pay my respects to their elders past and present. I'd also like to kick off by saying that tonight is sponsored by BWS and Copperberg, oh, hard ginger God. alcoholic brewed, 8.3% friends. That's That's a lot of percents. Oh, well, I uh, might get a bit loose in here tonight. Uh, and I am coming to you this week from the Meriton Suites in Zetland. I was at Meriton last week in Waterloo with Zetland this week. Who knows where I'll be next week? Maybe up my own ass. All right. Original owner. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into the stories of the week. And uh, Shakara, we're talking about Spotlight. <laughs> Because Justice Michael Lee has confirmed he will hand down his verdict in the Bruce Lerman defamation trial on Monday morning. It comes as seven confirmed Spotlight will return to our television screens on Sunday night at 8.45, looking at the Ozempic revolution. Confirmation of the return of the show that I work on comes despite many in the media assuming it would be cancelled due to the outrageous actions of a former producer who misused a company credit card without authorisation. All right, Malk and Robbo, I know you've got things to say about this topic. Malk, you're up first. Rob, thanks. It's It's been, I, I, look, I think I'm not stretching it by saying it's been a fraught week for, the, look, all of the people that work within Spotlight. You know, it's there's been significant pressure from elements of the media, press, uh, you know, printed uh, as much as uh, broadcast media. Calling for all sorts of things. Oh, there's no question there's been some misreporting take place. Fine with that. Um, there's been no, no, some... Really... I, and, and we talked about the fact that I'd jump in here. I, yeah, I just, yeah, please. Even to raise that issue, it's interesting. Someone on the Spotlight team who isn't a producer mm. said to me today, I never realised how much journalists lie. Now, right. if, you, if, you give, if you look at even headlines and examples of... Seven spent money on hookers and cocaine. No, they didn't. Mm. It was the former producer who's brought this into the public domain who did that. Yes. And Seven said, no, we've never authorised that, and he paid back the money. So how is right. that Spotlight's fault? Well, it depends on how deep we want to get into the whole thing, right? I, I acknowledge everything that you've said as being somebody inside the organisation that would know. Um the evidence that Taylor Auerbach has presented as a part of his, it's not a submission, was it? He was called before, legitimately before the the justice in the 10, you know, Lamb and Defination. Well, he wasn't Def called by the justice. He, well, I think he ended up being subpoenaed, but he supplied an affidavit to 10. He turned up. He got told he had to turn up. He turned up. He said some things. And he turned up ostensibly with receipts. And, and look, we have to acknowledge well, that. Well, we have to acknowledge that the justice said that not everything that um, came out of Taylor's position necessarily holds water from a completely truthful point of view. I don't think I'm out. And that was in reaction to Lisa Wilkinson's barrister saying that he was an honest and credible witness. And Justice Michael Lee said, well, hang on, let's not. And I'm paraphrasing here. He said, let's not pretend that he is doing it for the services of his majesty. 
sure. He and, and said this was a vendetta. The justice and, acknowledged that he might have an axe to grind. We can yes. we can lean into that. But when I don't even necessarily receipts, want to... that hasn't been proven in the court. Okay, okay. hold on, hold on. I got to butt in then. So obviously, sure. uh, look, he he has said things in court. He said things under oath. Um, clearly, they were strong enough for Justice Lee to admit them into the case. Uh, so Justice Lee admitted it. Go, it yeah, Justice Lee admitted that he was it. Because... Possibly not a great witness. Possibly not the best evidence. But the fact is, though, that he clearly had things to say that Justice Lee allowed the case to continue. Allowed the case to. to be reopened by Network 10. No, it didn't have to be. Justice well, he Lee did could because he witness. said this case is a high profile case. And yeah. in the interest of transparency, he said, I have no choice but to open the, reopen this case. And well, I he's reckon. He's got the facts to prove it. That there are facts in there. He does have facts. It's, he, he's not just come What, out what of the facts blue. have been proven? The First of all, Justice Michael Lee the, the hasn't handed hasn't down proven. his verdict. No, no, no. Evidence no, doesn't know. necessarily well, equal facts. I know that we talked about this, but every single sentence that Malk and I say doesn't mean that it needs a rebuttal directly from you. So we need to have a discussion here. So I understand that you want to you want to interrupt, and that's fine. But not Malk has said one sentence each time, and then you've butted in each time with a response. So we, we have to have a little bit because more you're of making a, these a discussion. But we have to have a bit of a discussion, though, don't we? That's, oh, that's all you, I'm saying. But, you, but you're making misstatements, and I'm not allowed to correct that. You no, said you, that he presented. You need, presented you need to wait a little bit while we talk about things before you come in and uh, go for your correct life. them. I think that that's the, that's important, Malk. I, I think you should continue, Malk. Malk has not been able to get a single single you know sentence out without you saying something about it. I, I think that that should be acknowledged, though. So, Malk, what are you saying? And we're back in three. To. Hi everyone. Uh, the, the look, I, and I appreciate that. There's there's a lot of um, just before I dive back into it, I apologise. There's a lot of energy and feeling and and understanding in this, as you acknowledge from the top, Rob. You work in Spotlight. You're a part of that team at the moment, and so you know a whole bunch of stuff that we don't. Even stuff that you can't talk about publicly. Fine, completely cool. Um, at this point, all I'm going to offer is ostensibly some of my own thinking along with a for lack of a better way of saying it regurgitation of the reporting around what's going on and you're and allowed in, to have your own opinions on what you think oh, sure. about like but totally understand without that. wanting to be spoken to like a child again the point i make is robo you were making misstatements you said taylor or had presented evidence and they were facts it is up to the justice to it is up to justice michael lee to determine whether that any evidence is reliable and is a fact that is not for us but also he didn't have the receipts he didn't have the receipts for the invoice that he claimed and yeah okay you know what maybe he has revealed as no journalist should ever do a possible source i don't know if bruce lerman was the source of that material mark um llewellyn the executive producer is the only person who really knows that he's never told anyone but taylor's gone out of his way to possibly reveal a source so that's one thing so if, if bruce lerman is found to have given out that evidence then he has broken some protocols and possibly um contempt of court i i don't know the legalities on that but to say anything has been proven against spotlight sorry sir i, I just don't think okay. you're right Nothing has, but he's presented, though, evidence to the court, and it's up to Justice Lee whether he accepts them or not. Let's get back to Spotlight, though, for the moment. Look, I, I think that, um, you know, Seven News is the most profitable brand for the network, okay? So it, 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 is, the, it is the brand that brings in money for the network. The fact that they've, they, they've, they've called it Seven News Spotlight, I think, was always a mistake from the very beginning because you can't separate the news brand. So we knew that 60 Minutes was was separate but you know under the uh, under the larger umbrella of nine news but it was never connected um i think this is the problem i think that seven uh, spotlight has tarnished that i think that if spotlight continues it is a very bad thing for the brand of seven news so you either have to rebrand it again so we did sunday night and we did spotlight it needs to be rebranded because you cannot tarnish your number one brand of a network with a with with a show that whether right or wrong and right rob it'll be proven in court um, whether they've done the wrong thing or not, or, or if it's if it's a good place to be part of. We've obviously seen lots of articles over the past couple of weeks to say that, you know, lots of uh, past and present producers, uh, people who have worked on the show, it, it is not a, a, it's a robust place to work, let's call it that. Um, I think that there was also an article saying that 60 Minutes um, with their Beirut scandal, you know, with the kidnapping and things like that, 
anyone who's trying to compare that is apples and oranges. We're, t- we're talking about a possible show where, where the, the, the uh, executive producer has said, we will do go to any lengths to get uh, the story. We'll do whatever it takes. But there you are didn't mean that pressures. literally. But sorry, mate, sorry, but we're, we're talking about grabs. We're talking about comments. The man made a comment and said, we will do whatever it takes to get the story. So you now, think he authorised to hookers that. and cocaine? I never said that, but I'm just saying that that's the that's the uh, the environment that is possibly being created at the spot. I work in that environment, and that's a lot of bullshit. It's bullshit. Okay. I work there, and I'm telling so I'm you, gonna that, jump, that is not. I'm going to jump in on this one, but that's and, but that's and, what I'm saying though. But the, the point is, it's a show anyway. that can't continue. It's going to have a soft launch, and I'm telling you right now, I believe that the soft exit of the show, it's the date has already launch. been decided. We've yes, launched the promo tonight for Ozempic. It's full and steam what, ahead. No one's going to, I mean, okay, fine. But it's it's already done for. You can't this keep bullshit. that program. I have never, no one has said to me, oh, we're doing a soft launch, Rob. That would mean no promos for the week. Yeah, but we it can't keep tonight, going. Tonight, launching the promo can't, early. Okay, in, fine, but it can't keep going. That show no, cannot no, keep going. No, that's your opinion in, a, in an enclosed media bubble. The viewing on, population doesn't give Rob, a shit about Rob, this as Rob, much stop. as you guys do. Rob, stop. We're on a TV podcast talking about our opinions of TV shows. So what do you want? I'm giving you my opinion of a TV yes, show that we're talking about. I'm disagreeing about. with your opinion. That's okay, but you don't need to shut me off while I'm trying to give that to you. Simple. We're on a panel show. We need to give our opinions. To help draw us back, and I'll interject. I apologise for interrupting, fellas. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of passion in the middle of this, and I appreciate that that's the case. Um, it would be best, I think, for us to shy away from conversations around the legal case, particularly sure. because I, I don't want us to land in any kind of situation where we might compromise. That I can talk legally about it. the case. I have watched every minute of it, and super. And you I can't. can't. Um, sorry. I, I can talk about it, but not in a way that is necessarily, pre- other than throwing an alleged in front of stuff, I, sure. I have no legal skill to be able to talk about any of that in a safe context. But it, it's, besides that, frankly, it's moot. We know, the stuff that we know is that Taylor has given some information, evidence ostensibly to the judge about the stuff that he knew and he acknowledged that he said he did. He's made some claims about the culture within seven years spotlight that haven't been tested. And I, and I appreciate that's a really difficult thing because in the context of this defamation case for him to say X and not allow ostensibly seven's lawyers or, you know, Mark as the EP or anyone else to be able to go, that's not how it is because that's not actually the core of what's going on. They're looking at this other thing and this other thing may turn into a separate lawsuit. We'll see what that does for itself. The challenge around it for Spotlight is in no small part along the lines of what Robbo has has talked about. There is growing pressure within the media. I acknowledge that, Rob, and that is a very small subset of the wider Australian population. Media love a scout. Right? Absolutely they do, and we've seen that play out many, many times before. And, the and they thing might that be I sorely think, disappointed this time. Well, I think they, they may or may, may not be because the, the challenge in this is twofold. One... The information that, that the claims that Taylor has made, that's probably the best way to, to to land it, speak from what he has said, speak to a specific kind of culture. Or well, speak and to his own culture, a kind of guy who thinks it's okay to get hookers and cocaine. And that may be the case, Rob, except that's that not that's not though. what he said. That- so we can push through that and I, I hear what you're saying. Oh, All I'm saying is that from a media perspective, Taylor has made some claims around the culture. And in that context, from everybody else externally, people like Kate McClymont and all sorts of people who have written column inches about it just this past weekend, mm-hmm. they are understandably looking to say, well, in that kind of situation, the culture is led by two people, the EP of the show and the executive director of the network. And while Mark Llewellyn as the EP of Seven Years Spotlight may may not survive that, I'd say he likely will at this point, but who knows? I don't want to make any sort of make any huge claims about that either way. While we know that James Warburton is leaving the network and and doing so, I'm going to say with his head held high, he has worked hard at Seven and done a great job as CEO. Let's not talk about the share price. The fact that it has come out that he is leaving, I think it's next week, 
even though he had said he finishes up with seven on, on June 30, and that is correct and valid and right. And in him leaving next week, it is probably the fact that he's taking some accrued leave and stuff that he has owed so that he then formally does finish on, on June 30. Excellent. And at any other time, huge pat on the back, James. Off you go. Have a great day. The difficulty of the timing of his exit is that it looks like it may not be and probably absolutely isn't connected to any of this spotlight kerfuffle. With James leaving now, it just looks bad. It just it's bad looks optics. bad. It's terrible optics. And, and so while people won't necessarily get the scalp that I appreciate you're talking about, Rob, in, in Mark, it looks like a scalp is being offered in James stepping away, air quotes, early. Please understand everything I'm saying in that is, is an optics, you know, how it looks situation versus what it actually is versus what I don't even know what it actually is, if that makes sense, right? I'm never going to go under- until June 30. You can't have an outgoing CEO and an incoming CEO. The new guy probably wants to do his own thing. James is on the way out. It sure. makes sense to me to leave. And, totally. And to think if James, from what I know about James, to me it would be quite the opposite where he would say, if, if, if this is going to be how people remember me, I will I'll be staying out. on, right? Yeah. So right. I, I just think the media misrepresent so much, so much of what's going on. And, yes, Robbo, go, I'm going to let you have your say uninterrupted and you no, can no, go I, for I, it. No, no, look, I've had my say. Look, I, I, I know what you mean by having scalps. I, I understand that. But it, this behaviour, though, has been backed up by other evidence over the years, like, you know, and, and lots of producers, and, yes, all of them anonymously, have come out and said what it was like to work at Sunday night and Spotlight. So are all of these people, all of these people are just liars. I don't know, right? So they're not proven. We can't. I would them. offer Robert. They've we probably all know. got axes to grind, right? No, That's no, not a reason. Not everyone has an axe to grind. Maybe sure. when you work somewhere and you work under someone, it's not always great, and it's okay to talk about that. The fact mm-hmm. that there are so many people who came forward and spoke to the media. I mean, you know, what reports are you reading? The age, the age on 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 the on the yeah, weekend. I read that weekend report. report. Yeah. So there was heaps of sources in there that said that it was not nice to work there. It was a it was a really rough place to work. It was robust, um, and that's okay. That's okay if you want to work, and that's what television is. And and it's 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 an environment that people thrive or they don't thrive. So it's not for everyone. I'm, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. And I think but the... you can't then say that it's all rainbows and clouds and no beautiful one flowers. Well. Yeah, but I think the real problem difficult. is, and, and you'd, you'd acknowledge this, I think, Rob, what, one article from particularly, you know, ostensibly a competitor's masthead, right? That's just the, the bully push and throw of, of media, particularly modern media, right? The challenge for poor old Seven and particularly Seven News Spotlight is that there is a growing list of articles f- from across the media that are not even just regurgitating what, oh, but this, not, you know, Daily Mail style, this person said, and here's the thing, and here's a photo of someone's ass. It's not that. There are There is a growing list, which builds to a growing call, either from within the media and take that for what it's worth. However, I think it spills then out into the broader public discourse, which has people then starting to question, not just Seven News Spotlight, but the media as a bigger behemoth, and that says, well, if this is acceptable here, I acknowledge that it's not, and I acknowledge that you're saying that it's not acknowledged, it's not acceptable within seven. Cool, I, I take that for what it's worth. The again, the optics, the way it looks to Joe Pundit, if that's what it's like there, then it must be like that everywhere else. And, and so the media, to some degree, yeah. have to kind of close ranks and go, it's not like this fucking everywhere else. And I, I get that, you know, we're saying. Not we're saying seven are saying no, no. What? This is Sorry. Taylor. You're just going to have to help me out because I'm a bit sure. dumb. Oh no, what mate! Is... mate let's take a number, right? In that race, I'm number one. What is Spotlight actually accused of doing wrong here? As it stands to my interpretation of what's flying around, allowing the either reimbursement or purchase mm-hmm. of some, I will say, morally dubious services 
for that was the never rationale. allowed. He misused a company credit card, and he had okay. to give the but money how, back. How how are we in? Do whatever and, it takes to get the sh- to get the story. So I know well, you're saying don't take that. Hang on, hang on. So, so someone at the Australia what Post office can go and kill a person. Is Australia Post responsible for no, that? No, no. Let's not lean into. Did Australia Post account? say oh. in a secret meeting, mate? Let's go and do whatever. You I need have to the get capacity the story. to mute the both of you. Just chill for a second. That's just. I, I understand where you're getting to, Rob. It's a terrible example, Rob. Murder. So, how many how many quotes could you be misquoted on on stuff you said in production offices? Um, lots, but I wasn't a boss and I didn't have, there, there was this uh, relationship between the, the three men there, which is very well documented. They've all fallen out now. None of them talk to each other. Uh, Anybody want to buy like, a set of used golf clubs? So I yeah, just come you. down to it. The actions that you're accusing Spotlight of. No, no, I'm not. Of- no, no, no. I'm not accusing them. Step back, right back. No, 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 no. I'm just repeating the massive accusations against yeah, okay. Spotlight. I'm not the one that making the- them. Accusations that have been levelled at Spotlight are not mm. the doing of Spotlight. They are the doing of a rogue producer who ultimately had his contract not renewed because of his actions. He said yes. in court Agreed. he was on the way out and Agreed. he had to pay the money back. And stupidly, and you might say stupidly, they thought, okay, he's made a big mistake. We're going to yep. give him another chance. But yep. when he was in the fold, though, everything was okay with what he was doing. So previous stories, it was no, all it okay. Taylor was great. Yes, it was. He's been there for ages. They used yep. his house his to do lots of reenactments. He started doing shit like this. For once, I, look, I, it'll be tested in court. The thing is, you've, you've got it. I've done it with a will, Robbo. Unless Seven know, brings no, something against Taylor. You've Justice you've Michael Lee will say the evidence this week was basically irrelevant because That's both now, both Brittany and Brittany. Uh, uncredible witnesses. He's essentially already said that. I don't think the, the events that of last Bruce week, as Brittany much as they were yes. great for yeah. media fodder, will make no relevance in the case. And I'm also predicting Bruce Lerman will win the defamation case and there'll be nothing wow, adversely that's found against Seven. And that's all that's fine. Huge. But the, the Court of Public Opinion, though, I think that Seven News needs to jettison Spotlight. If they keep Spotlight as a brand under Seven News, they are just digging their own grave. I think that's I, ridiculous. I, but I think well, by the time we get to next Tuesday's gone. podcast, we will know the ratings results of the Olympic episode at 8.45 after Farmer Wants a Wife on 7, and we'll see what happens. Just quickly, Rob, before we dive in there, I just, I just want to put a, a cap on this for all of us. The difficulty that 7 particularly as a network face is that there has been so much mud flung around this issue that unfortunately even little bits but bits of it are sticking and it's that within media and elite circles to the viewing public no that's the problem it's got beyond media and elite circles i agree with public i I know that they've seen the story but i don't think it's as big as you think it is well, look, I, I, I'm going to offer that I agree. The ratings on Sunday will be part of the indication, but not the total story. I, I think that the long-term viability... Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If Spotlight rates, you know, 100,000, you'll all be saying sure. they've, t- they've turned on the brand. Oh, if mate, it if Spotlight rates 100,000, it's in the if, shit. Hang on, if it rates five or 600,000, won't you there say, well, it hasn't affected the ratings? Well, None of this has affected the ratings. Right? Ratings are, rel- are, are relative. So if it rates hang 100... On, hang on. You're all writing it off based off the the, the brand oh, no, no, is tarnished. No one's going to watch it. But you're now saying that if it does have a win, you won't classify it as a win because it doesn't suit the narrative. No, 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 no. no. I, I said the ratings are relative, Rob. Okay? If it rates 100,000 viewers, yes, it's in the shit. There is no question because anything in that time slot that rates 100,000 viewers, FBI, we're, we're talking about you on Channel 10, it's in the yeah. shit. If it rates five to 600... Super, but if it rates five to six hundred, and hypothetically, sixty minutes rates eight to nine hundred thousand. I mean, we're starting to see some concern about where maybe the. But as we have talked about, one episode doth not maketh a trend. We need to see where Spotlight's going to be, not just on the first night, week four, week six, and I'm going to say this gently, if it makes it that far, but if it gets to week six and eight, and the trend is still this kind of gap then you would have to suggest some damage has been done to that brand and needs to be addressed. Well, last year, I guess, I think it rated about five or 600,000. 
So if it rates that, it's on par. Um, not if but, it's five or six hundred thousand this year to last year, it's not. But I understand what you're saying because the ratings have changed, right? That's all I mean. It's it's just that the way that we measure it is different. Six hundred thousand this year is not six hundred thousand from last year. Sure. That's that's all. Right. It's just a ratings thing. The AFR is reporting, and Seven haven't denied it, that former Sunrise EP Michael Pell is no longer with the network. After 11 years in the top job, Pell moved to LA to become Seven's Senior Vice President of Entertainment Content, North America. It's believed his contract has not been renewed. Robbo, he was certainly <clears throat> a creative force. The, that cannot be denied. No, he was a massive personality at Seven, and obviously uh, he began his climb after being underneath Adam Boland for a while, which was great. And he certainly used uh, that relationship to further his career at Seven, which was fantastic. The thing is, though, what, what has he produced, though, after this massive fanfare of being over in North America? Now, I have very good sources to say that he didn't even need a, a card to get into the office. He was never at his desk. He never went there. Um, so obviously from a, and we're talking about a share price, a share price point of view here, uh, we've got someone who, uh, you know, obviously... Um, was swimming under the the cloud of Adam Boland and was able to keep the show going with a lot of other great people around him and obviously the great presenters that they have and have had. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, how much money was spent on getting him over there, putting him up, you know, buying the office space, you know, all that kind of thing, sending him across the country, probably to Europe to go to a few screen conferences and whatnot. What has he ever produced being within that title and i'm not being but we, we, we don't but I, know but I, because but I think that anyone, he's not reporting but I, think, but I but i think anyone that would uh, either be a shareholder at seven or even anyone working at seven would go for goodness sake we've spent we we get cuts we get people being sacked we've got uh all of these happen budget cuts across the business and yet we're sending someone over here who's produced nothing has brought nothing back now remember that but you don't seven know had that. the oscars seven had the oscars he could have produced an oscar special no Oscar special produced. He was right there on the ground. He wasn't What's there to produce. There? He wasn't there but, to produce. Sorry, I, mate. Look, this is this is really difficult. If we are, if we're going to talk about seven network stories, it's a little bit difficult with you, I think. But the, my point, though, is I think All you right. would agree. What uh, has mate, he actually? You, no, no, you can't produced. do that. You can't do that. I wear many hats, which I declare, and I'm not sticking up for seven here. I was actually just trying to make the point that we don't know what Michael Pell did. And your arrogance and the way you talk is beyond the pale. So, my friend, you have the show. Hey, Robo. Is, yeah, great. Yeah, all I'm saying, though, is that, you know, that we don't know anything that he's produced. So, I, and I guess he's already been left, let go. And apparently he was let go a lot of months ago. So, what, what's, what's you know, I, I don't understand. I, I think we should know what his producers being that. I, I can't remember. I think his title was the Senior Vice President of Entertainment Content North America. Where, where's, and, and he was, he, he was there at the Oscar. I mean, he was in LA. Why wasn't he producing a special? I mean, that's the kind of thing, that's the bread and butter stuff. So obviously you have to go over to London and go to other places, New York and things like that to get content. But I, I was just answering the question, so it's 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 unfortunate that the show has now ended like this. I I I had a similar question, Robbo, in that I was unsure what Michael's remit was. Um, and and I would have thought, given that he did move to the US with, I would have said reasonable fanfare. Post yeah, absolutely, absolutely. His, post his time on on Sunrise and as the director of morning television, mm -hmm. that. Should something have come back or been, you know, branded with with the Pell touch, that we would have heard all about it and how Michael's discovered this or you know transmitted Correct. this. That doesn't mean that he hasn't. However, I, I like to think that I'm pretty reasonably educated about what goes on in that regard, and hadn't heard anything. So, no. so I'm not overly sure. And the only thing that Neil, Neil Shoebridge could say was that no, he's still with us. So if, if anyone contacts a PR at a network and they go, well, hang on, this guy that you're paying lots of money to and sent him over in big fan fact, you would never just say, oh, he's still working here. You'd go, actually, he's still working here. And can we point you to A, B, C, D, E, F, G of what he's produced for the network or what he's brought to the network? Um, and, and that wasn't the, the only comment from the network was, no, he still works here. And then now he doesn't work there. So, I mean, I think it's a fair comment that, that I brought up earlier with Rob what has he done? Because at, as we both know, we've, we've been in the game a long time. Optics are everything. So if you get someone scratching around, you would absolutely go, 
we're paying this person, let's say 500 grand, let's just say 500 grand a year, right? We're paying them that, we move them over, and this is what they brought to us. It was one sentence. Michael still works for us. Yeah, well, now it, allegedly he doesn't anymore. No, that, no, now he doesn't. But when, that, yeah. when the journalist was first digging around, that's the one sentence that was put out about Michael Pitt. I don't understand that. I, yeah. Well, it, look, it's it's a, a quite end to what was a glittering career within the Seven mm. Network for Michael Pell. I hope that uh, whatever he turns his hand to next, I'm sure will be a great success. Congratulations, I, I, Michael. Well I done. I agree too. You know what, though? What's look, that? We're going to have a script here, but let's go on because we're talking about Bluey. So the Bluey household has been... Hang on. I tried to do music. I don't have it. Oh, no, that's I, I didn't know what you were doing. So, obviously, um, there's the I. story that uh, the Bluey house has been sold. Does that mean that Bluey's going? Mog, Bluey's a cash cow. I mean, it's a cash dog. Yeah, well, Bluey it's up for sale. It's not sold yet, story. Robbo. That's right. That's right. But but they're also trying to link this to being close to the, uh, the show. There's still much more run in the old dog, isn't there? Well, th th this is an interesting claim. So, we know uh, that the ABC... Launched with great fanfare at the end of 2023, that this year we're getting a supersized episode of Bluey. Love and it. friends, that supersized episode of Bluey is this coming Sunday morning at eight o'clock on ABC Kids. It's called <laughs> yeah. The Sign. 28 minutes long, brings a whole bunch of benefits, not least of which will be that it will register in the Voz ratings. So we'll get to see how many of all of us suckers have gotten up and watched it at 8am, whether we are adults with no small people or we have lots of little people and we need to watch it. And of course, BVOD will play a huge portion in that. That's the ratings bit done. Um, as far as the future of the show, this is the big question, Robbo, because when they said that there was this episode called The Sign coming, mm. great. Mm. We thought nothing of it. And in fact, all of the promo about it showed that it was a, a, one of Bluey's uncle's weddings, right? As in... Uh, Bluey's uncle is getting married. Great. Bluey and Bingo, the two little core cool little girls, get to dress up as flower girls and be a part of the... Lovely. Fabulous, yeah. right? Yeah. Hooray. Yeah. And then at the end of the episode that aired Sunday just passed called Ghost Basket, also new, where they make believe play, the grannies are back and their house is being sold. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. But they save it because they're ghosts. At the end of it, when their mum, Chili, runs out of the, the house... The shot pulls back and reveals a for sale sign for real out the front of the house. So the house is for sale. Of course, the questions are then what's happening, why the heel is selling the house, unanswered questions that we expect will be answered on Sunday. Now, this has thrown open wide speculation, which I've been happy to fall into. Yeah. <laughs> because at the same time, in a perfect bit of marketing, Ludo Studios have listed Bluey's house, the yeah, animated the, picture yeah. of the house on domain.com.au. Yeah. And they haven't just listed it for sale and given all of the good reasons about why you should buy it and all those sorts of things. They've also put in like a single, a character who is the real estate character that popped up from season two. He's selling the house. I think his name is Bucky. Yeah. Um, and the phone number that is listed on the, on the domain.com.au listing, when you ring that number, the person who played that character says, oh, sorry, can't get the phone right now, blah, blah. But if you're interested, make sure you leave. Like a <laughs> real real estate kind of phone. It's brilliant. Which now, is what makes Bluey so good, right? Because they oh, capture these essences of real life. So we know that the real estate agent is the real estate. And and that's why we, the kids love it. But when you watch it as an adult, and I've watched it with my nephews and these, yes. you're like, oh, my God, that's exactly what these people are. You know, that's what that character, that's what happens. You know, mum and dad want to have some special time or mum and dad are yes. hungover. That's what makes this bloody show work. Oh, but, it's and the benefit of is, is Bluey is that it's super layered, right? So it's not just giving us this great story Correct. that our yes. little people yeah. love. There's also this story that all of the parents or older people go, oh, oh, I got, got me right in the heart. Yeah. What's wrong, mum and dad? Nothing, I'm just tired. Um, yeah. You know, we've got all of that you know, wrapped up in the middle of it. So with this happening, it's meant that lots of people have been suggesting, oh, what's going on? We don't know. What are the healers doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to put it to you, Robbo, and this is mm. an unpopular view, oh, um, that this is the end of Bluey that this episode coming this Sunday, the sign is actually the farewell with Bluey going out on top. And let me put to you the reasons I know. Like the Seinfeld that lip, way? Hold going that lip Seinfeld? strong. Yeah, okay, sorry. Come on. I mean, it, it, a great week for it. Curb Your Enthusiasm finishes, Bluey finishes. What a great bookend. <laughs> um, the, the, the reasons why I'm going to put to you that it's a case. One, it's very hard 
for Joe Brum, the creator, and the Ludo team to deliver such high quality storytelling over what is it, nearly 40 episodes every season. And we've had three seasons so far. Yep. That's lots of stories. In those three seasons, the girls, um, Bluey and Bingo, have grown up once. They've had a birthday. So I think they've gone from five and four to six and five. I'm sorry if I've got that wrong. That's where I remember. No, yes, 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 we get it. Yeah, yeah. So they've grown up a little bit. But of course, six years ago, when they cast those voices, the girls that have done those voices have grown up. And, and they've had to digitally alter the voices. Is that right, Moki? It is my understanding. They have done That's some funky too. chicken stuff yes. to keep them sounding like they are little little kids, yep. little girls who they're portraying. Yeah, exactly. Now, yep. it's 2024, and they could have done a whole bunch of work, and by now could be delivering via AI all of the lines for those girls. You know, sign mm. a contract here. We're taking your voice, and off you go, blah, 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 in perpetuity. Yep. The, the, the difficulty is, in the midst of this, they're growing up. It's difficult to, del to deliver all the storytelling. And then you also get to acknowledge, we could churn this out for another three or four seasons, no worries. Mm. But would it be as good? Would Bluey be as beloved if we did that and milked it dry? Or we just went, you know what? Here is Bluey at its very best. Mm. High five, we're done. The girls get to grow up. And no one really, like they've kept it very close as to who the, the young people are that have played yes, those true. kids. Yeah, that's right. For good reason. Yeah, let's let them be kids um, and allow that to be the case. So I reckon, he, and here's a great way to do it. The healers sell their house because of whatever reason, right? They're going mm. around Australia. They're moving internationally. Something, something. The house is so iconic. And in the exit, yes. they get to teach all of us another lesson about mm. what it means to deal with change and to move on from things that you love. This is the one house that those two little girls have known their whole life mm. and ostensibly they have to leave it there will be deep sadness for them and by extension the bluey audience so why not let bluey do what it does well and help us learn a little bit about how we ourselves can deal with that sort of change i think it's, it's a very good point moki it, it is such a beautiful show um i'm not ready to say goodbye i don't think and i'd oh, like neither. to think uh, and, and i think that's important and obviously we're gonna have repeats and I, you know it's gonna be one of those shows that we continue to watch and there he is behind you. Oh, sorry, she. Sorry, she. Sorry. sorry. It's all right. They, them, whatever. I don't know. But um, look, Bluey's wonderful. Um, it is such an important show uh, that has come out of Australian television. And it's wonderful. I, as you know, and I think a lot of people who watch the podcast know, I watch a lot of TikTok. I, I do enjoy it. But there are so many wonderful videos from all over the world where people are photographing or videoing, you know, their kids, whatever, watching Bluey. You know, there have mm. been those wonderful videos where they've shown that um, the kids are now talking in, a, in an Aussie accent or they say certain things Australian because they've watched Bluey so much, which I think, which I think is really lovely. It's simple storytelling, but it's complex storytelling. Mm, absolutely. Uh, it, it's engaging storytelling. And it, all of those things, the, the animating style, um, the, 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 the storylines that we all know and love from either, you know, being parents or kids or uncles or nephews or nieces, you know, all of that kind of thing. It is such a wonderful thing. Um, when, when, when you, every time you kept saying healers, I thought all I could think about is maybe they could move to Mount Thomas. I mean, that's a really, <laughs> really funny kind of a very oh mate, very I've, I've been of, making claims yeah. that it's the greatest documentary about an animated family in <laughs> yeah. dollar ever. Right? right. Like oh, we can see Bluey the college like, years. You know, because oh, you know from 90 to could you imagine Bluey the college? Yes. Yeah, so Bluey would it, goes to Wouldn't that just <gasps> turn it on its head? Oh my god. Bluey goes to uni. Oh my god. I mean, that's mate, if Bluey went to uni. All of a sudden, we're all going to feel 165. Yeah, Look, we honestly, we could very quickly turn this into the Bluey podcast. Probably best yes. that we don't. Yes. Friends, we will know from this Sunday, um, 8, 8 o'clock it kicks off, 28 minutes long, the sign, the final episode of season three of Bluey. I'm saying the final episode ever, but who knows? Happy to it be It deserves prime time. Me. It deserves of, a replay on prime time. Of all the things, Robbo, this yep. is one I'll be absolutely stoked to be wrong about. But my oh, spidey no. senses are tingling and I don't think I'm wrong. So oh, well, there you go. we'll see you what happens. Bluey, yeah. possibly, probably finishing up this Sunday. We've got a few other stories to talk about. But before yes. we dive into them, we probably just need to pick up the, the fact that this is now a two and not a three. Um, there was a conversation at the start of this podcast that bled through. Um, the first two, two, two stories were about seven issues, one of which was Seven News Spotlight, which Rob McKnight, um, our usual host, works for in a freelance capacity. 
which he declares regularly. That's a no yes. concern or question. No. And we're having some conversation about the current sort of stuff that's flying around connected to the Larriman uh, Channel 10 uh, defamation case. In and of itself, that was going to be a challenging conversation. We knew that happened and we got through it. Uh, we then moved on to the conversation about Michael Pell. And uh, I think by that point, Rob had had his fill. I do not profess to speak for him. Um, I, I do know that Rob uh, got upset with, with the line of um, questioning and approach that Robbo was offering. We're all big kids here. We've all got feelings that can get hurt sometimes. Rob decided to step away. If Rob returns, that would be fabulous. If Rob doesn't, that is Rob's choice. For now, tonight, we will push on and finish the show. And who knows what could happen next week? Could just be me. Could just be me talking to myself. No, I'll be frigging back. I'll tell you right now. Oh, it's because you've got nothing on like me, Robbo. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got now, we've got a couple other stories that we will talk about before we turn our very glorious eyes to the excellent TV binge box segment, which could oh, go for a record that. time tonight. Yeah, because yeah, um, he won't be wrapped up. Because <laughs> I won't get wrapped up. might be you at the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah look, we'll, we'll see how we go. There's an interesting story, and by interesting, I mean not very interesting at all, uh, in the AFR that says, talks about Nine and Foxtel battling for Tab Corp's Sky Racing channels uh, in a streaming context to bring them to their various platforms. Um, Robbo, I personally hold the opinion that A, not great, and B, as you can read on the ticker at the bottom, compete to grab a hold of Tab Corp's streaming animal cruelty competition that also destroys human lives. I think the gambling is a blight on our country and that horse racing is horrendous. What do you think? I agree with you. And, and I really do. I think that the amount of uh, you know, advertising for gambling is atrocious in this country. And if you go to any kind of uh, bathroom uh, in a pub or anywhere in RSL, you'll see that there are all these, these, uh, these posters saying, you know, you need help, you know, you know, gambling, it, you know, you can get help for it. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult problem. Um, Social media is saturated yep. with gambling advertising. Um, there, there were, we then had a little bit of a reprieve, or not a reprieve, but a um, of the uh, the gambling uh, community going. Oh, okay, so we'll put a black a black screen at the end of every ad and big white text, and that's us just going. Well, that's what we need to do. I, I think it's I think it's grubby. Look, do I think that the, the the future is that possibly one of the networks will have one of their additional channels as being a gaming channel? Uh, Possibly, I mean, we're I, I don't but 90% know, but that's of the, the way there though, with some it? of the bloody, like, you know, um, rubbishy, you know, shopping channel stuff. That yeah, that's up. what I mean. That's what I mean. Yes, yes. So are we going to see, because also what we're seeing on, on TikTok are these, not fake, but, you know, they, they, they're, they're set up like our show kind of in the way of, and they're talking about hunts. <laughs> set up like our odds. show? What, dodgy? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you, know, but you know what I mean? Like uh, there are odds and they're talking about who they're going to pick for the football this weekend mm. and, you know, multi-bets and same-day multis. Not, and that's how they set it up. And they they, they frame it on, on social media as if it's a TV show. Mm. That's the future. And I think it's almost an audition from social media and from, you know, Tab Corp and, and, sports bit and all that kind of thing to say to say to the networks hey we can do this it's going to be cheap just give us one of your channels and we will pay you this amount of money i think it's around the corner though Mark. i mean we don't we don't want it to happen but isn't it around oh, the no, look, I, any kind of revenue they just from a commercial point of view robo i agree it's yeah. all but a done deal that's why we've got foxtel and nine battling it out for Correct, the rights yeah. to get it anyway yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah. make it a good thing right I, to, no, the, no. to the point where frankly i would offer that in the same way that in my lifetime advertising for cigarette sales has completely vanished from everywhere because it kills people. Okay. Yeah. Um, while gambling in and of itself doesn't directly contribute, i.e. like a cigarette would give you lung cancer and you die, yeah. um, it is almost identical in what gambling does to families and gambling Absolutely. does to people's lives. Hello. Welcome to the Woke Lefty Mulk podcast. Um, I'm agreeing with you. This, no, no, I know, I know you are, but I'm just thinking yeah. about everybody else and we don't have Rob here to balance me <laughs> yeah. out. So, you know, it's swung very hard, friends. Um, now, Robbo, you're a fan of television. I think it's I fair did. to say. Were you watching the Logies last year? I did. Do you remember who won the gold Logie by any chance? Of course, Sonny Kruger. Right, the lady herself, the lady of the moment. Yeah. Now, can you remember much of Sonia Kruger's speech? Because she can't. Well, no, she can now, because I'm sure she's seen more than one edit of it. There is, uh, funnily enough, 
timed for the return of Lego Masters on Sunday, Hamish Blake appears in Stellar Magazine, where he was talked about a whole bunch of things, not least of which is his career or not, and all of those sorts of things. But the moment in Sonia Kruger's Gold Logie acceptance speech, where she passed a, an offhanded joke, and it was a joke, uh, about the fact that their shared manager said to her that he was wanting to get rid of Hamish because and focus all of her time on Sonia because Sonia's far more valuable. Ha, 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 ha. Lol's, yeah, fine. Lol's right. And we're at the point where it is 12-something at night. Most of the people in the room are well pissed. Yeah, yeah I was going to do a little mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've cut to yeah. Hamish, who's pulled a face in response to that joke. But the problem was, again, we get no context. Hamish has said in the story, oh, no, I was pulling a face for the benefit of my wife and Andy who are at the table and we were joking about that. It's just that's the moment that they caught me and broadcast in response to that joke. And that wasn't how I felt anyway. But he then also went on to say that, oh, but I should have probably put out on social media. I don't care. It wasn't a thing. Everyone's trying jokes. I'm not offended by it, blah, blah, blah. But because he didn't say anything, it became a much bigger thing than it actually is. Do, do people care? I mean, if we talk about the media bubble, Robbo, do people yeah. care about that shit? I'm going to say, and I don't want to obviously dig up the earlier part of the episode, I I, I don't think people care about this thing. They care about what they're watching. TV Black Box but, podcast, guaranteed. Correct. But the people who pull the strings in the background and these kind of in-jokes, you know, we can talk about Patty. So Bert used to talk about Patty, but we knew who Patty was, right? Mm. Um, so you can talk about those kind of things. When you talk about the manager in the background saying this, that is very much an in-the-room, an in-joke kind of thing. Very um, much, but, right? The problem is when it's much. broadcast to television all but live and we, we don't get the in-the-room vibe and the in-the-room in the reaction, it can make for quite a you know difficult perceived faux pas, can't it? Of, of course. And I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I also think, though, that Hamish is a consummate professional, right? And, and yep. especially... You, it, it's not like there are secret cameras. There is a camera right there looking for reactions, and it's there anyway. Uh, yep. This is a man who's been around long enough, so it's not like it's his. He's Gold Logie like winner himself from maths, exactly. He's not a contestant of maths who this is their first time at the Logies. The camera's right there. You're on, and you're on yep. anywhere in that room. I was lucky enough to go there once in 2017. Uh, a wonderful night, but there are cameras everywhere. But as we know, like right now, that's a camera right there. He did the reaction, I think, to get the reaction or he, yep. you know, he made the facial expression to get the reaction as as he said I, I i just don't think there's anything to this there's no validity he's a professional um if he felt anything it would have been hidden this is a non-story and this yeah. is a bubble story no yeah, one gives a shit. yeah and and i think that the the one thing that hamish probably delivered that maybe some people hadn't recognized. I think most people certainly watching this, listening to this podcast would recognize mm -hmm. when it comes to something like the Logies, it's one of the last big full on proper live entertainment events that happens, you know, in the, yeah, in the, very, very the television very calendar. So when everybody, and they are all, God bless them, people that just want attention. So if they get the lights on them and a camera in front of them and the microphone on, they are going to either do their best or they're going to do their best to throw a line in. They're going to try and make it memorable, make that, you it's know. It's performing. Right? They are performing. Exactly. You're spot on. And as yeah. he said, there are jokes that land. There are jokes that don't. You just move on. It just and is also, what it is. Can I say, uh, with Sonny Kruger, though, you get mm -hmm. a gold logie. As you said, it's the end of the night. It is, in that bubble, it is Everyone's amazing. tired and emotional. Everyone wants, but, you know, she got it. So we also can't judge, uh, you know, we're used to seeing our TV people really polished, but it's really yep. lovely just to see it's it's off the cuff. And and like you say, that the road from being nominated to winning the Gold Logie is long. There's lots of press. There's lots of yep. promo, both within your own network and also in press. Obviously, the day of, the day before, yes. and, and the Red Cup. It's it's a huge thing, and you are one of the people. And essentially, I think. It, how do I say this? It's almost like you're one of the losers. If that, if if you understand what I'm saying here, mm. you are the loser unless you're the winner. If that makes sense. I know so oh, that's actually how winning works. Like, that's right. You've work. got to put on this face, and you are front and center constantly. Yeah. yeah. Well, who's the god like you? Well, and then you've got all this, you know, these these ideas going around. Well, they shouldn't get it because of this. They should get it. So then you finally we get to midnight, right? Yep. Everyone's pissed as a tick. Uh, they've eaten all this food. I think uh, they tied an emotional. Yeah, tired and emotional. Sorry, sorry, that's what I should have. Is this sorry. thing on? Tired and emotional. 
and you get up there, look, she's going to make some jokes that don't land, and that's okay. Right. And, and you know, or she's going to make some in jokes because you are literally running off adrenaline at this yes. point. Yes. Because it really is. If you're on TV, you want to be on that stage, and when you yeah. get there, it's not going to be polished. No, so I just think. Just and think frankly, that. given how long the Logies runs and how much of a punish sometimes it can be, <laughs> yes. when you get to that hour of the night, no one is after a 20 minute eloquent speech. They actually exactly. want you to fuck it up. They want they you just to, go want to go to the network party. Let's get on. It, it's right. Shut up. We're Let's all going to the party. The other place, I meant. Not yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The other place. Just to ease the pain for those in the, the, the chat that are wondering, my understanding is that yes, Sam Pang is a lock for the host this year. Oh, I yes, I him. agree. It would be loved difficult him. to find anybody to follow him yep. at this point. Uh, but it'll be great to have him back in his writing team. And for those who are unaware of who Hamish Blake is, the one person that is uh, on the podcast chat, um, I'd just like to remind you that you can probably see him everywhere dressed as a large Hubble box um, oh. because he and uh, Andy Lee are currently the Good faces thing. of the Hubble campaign. Everybody's hubbling. Um, yeah. Our final story for tonight before we move to the binge box is going to be a really quick one. Congratulations to Kevin Perry, uh, our lead editor oh, at tvblackbox.com.au, oh, yes. who managed to get out a great little bit of information. Now, we knew that Jeopardy Australia had been made for nine mm. in the UK and that it was coming this year. Hosted by, uh, I mean, a, a guy you might have heard of, Stephen Fry. Great. Robbo, Kevin was able to tell us when it's landing in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us when? Uh, it's going to be a Saturday night, I guess. I mean, who knows? It's going to so, be very pretty deep into nothing, isn't it? Let's pretend that I don't know how television works. If you're hosting or delivering an entertainment show other than, let's say, 20 years ago, Hey, Hey, It's Saturday, on a Saturday night at 7.30, yeah. how much do you back that show? Look, it's kind of like, you know, you've got a couple of guinea pigs and there's some that are nice, there are some that are ugly. And this is the guinea pig you put out and you leave it out overnight, hoping that a hawk gets it. If a hawk doesn't get it, fine. You'll bring it back in the next week and put it back out there on the Saturday. Just, is this analogy working for you? I'm it's making it up as I go sure. along. Let's but go you know what it. I mean? But it's just, it's... It, it, it doesn't scream people, like the network supports it, does it? Well, it clearly means that they've, I would suggest they've seen some episodes. But there's only six too. Like it's a short run. And they've seen something and they've gone, no. And... So, again, where are the people on the ground? So if you've only got a short run, surely you've got people on the ground going, this isn't working. We're going to revise. Yeah. We're going to work overnight and we're going to fix what... I know it's a, it's, a, it's a format. I get it. But do we need to revitalize the questions for an Australian audience? Are the questions not working? Are our contestants not getting the questions? The, the fact is that there were six yeah. episodes and a network executive or no one on the ground or producers on the ground, no one has gone, hmm, until it's got back here. We've got the six tapes. Let's sit back in the in the in the viewing room. You know, it's uh, in North Sydney. Feed up. Let's put it in. Feed it up. Let's have a little wine. Oh my God, this is shit house. Uh, we were going to put this on, you know, a Wednesday night or a Thursday night, whatever. Not anymore. Uh, stuff. It. It's it's going on a Saturday night. Look, Surely that screams that this is not working. Possibly the the real challenge for nine now is that this ostensibly, and we probably need to keep our powder a little dry. We haven't seen an episode yet. Yeah, of course, it's of course, coming of course. shortly. Um, but this would mean for two failures to launch for nine this year. After the massive success of Married at First Sight, Food Stars Australia is being burned off tonight, tomorrow night. Like tonight's episode, I think, is nearly know, a two and a half, three hour epic <laughs> where two people get a win, <laughs> yeah. right? A clear sign oh, they're burning yeah, yeah. shit off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then everything, I think, is then being compressed and condensed into next week. Done, get out of here. Uh, and the next thing will come along. And for Jeopardy to then be Saturday night really does suggest that, well, maybe it could have been better. Who even knows? But like, sorry, I know. We, but like you said, six episodes. Mm. You're spending a lot of money. We're over there anyway. We're using the set. We've got Stephen Fry, all fantastic. Yep. Never heard of him. Um, but they, exactly. But all of a sudden, someone's gone somewhere after they've spent, no doubt, a few million dollars to get this done. And I'm being conservative there. Yep. They've then gone after the fact. Are we then expected to feel sorry for networks where make decisions on the bloody ground? Mm. Not make it in the viewing, you know, in North Sydney. Oh, shit. Burn it. What? Makes no sense. Anyway. Jeopardy Australia, friends. <laughs> Tune in Saturday in a couple of weeks. Well done, Kevin, on getting that out there because I think yes, you've beaten everybody job, else to it. Uh, and job, that's man. the kind of exclusive you can expect from TV Black Box. Not only great research and knowing the industry and what's going on, but yeah. a podcast that goes from three to two in the middle of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Keep some going. Um, and now we again, oh, we get to open that creak 
<laughs> uh, t- sorry, that's a big back, friends. The TV no. big box is here. Robbo, what have you been watching this week? Okay, so um, Gillian Anderson in Scoop. Um, Amazing. This right? is on ridiculous. Netflix? On Netflix. On Netflix. Thank obviously, you. follows the, the story of um, the journal who got the story with, and the producers, rather, at Newsnight on the BBC who got that. I started watching it again last night. So after I watched the scoop, I watched the interview, the original with Prince Andrew. Yes. Um, they and this was the interview where he claims that he can't sweat and like can't sweat in relation to the uh, Jeffrey, what's his name thing? Epstein. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't, I can't, could I sweat? No, I couldn't. No, I can't. Sweat. I couldn't sweat. It was brilliant. The way he just goes like that, even there. Um, it was cringeworthy to watch it on scoop. I could not finish it, and I've tried. This is actually probably my fifth or uh, sixth time trying to watch that original really? interview, and I can't do it. It's See, so uncomfortable. Would have made that interview better watch. would have been when he said, "I can't sweat," and just a little bead. Yeah, and, right. his and the, the yeah. actor's eyes, and I've, I've, I've looked at behind the scenes vision of this, and you can see there's so many prosthetics for that actor as well. Um, in in wide shots, Gillian Anderson nails this. Now it's yeah. a very clear um, haircut, which is great. The mannerisms, it's kind of she kind of hunches a little bit. She Gillian Anderson is brilliant. And we remember that for a long time, Gillian Anderson was in the shadow of David Duchovny yes. and got paid way less than David Duchovny on the Exiles and everything. I, I adore her and I think it's fantastic that she has now proven herself to be a, a far more versatile actress um, in, in, in working far more than he did. And I remember she turned up in, in, was it the last couple of, or a season of The Crown as Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, exactly. And, that and was really, amazing. And she's fantastic. So Scoop was amazing. I'll say this also, a but brilliant runtime. A brilliant runtime. It didn't feel the need to Oppenheimer no, the shit out of the story. It. And that's yeah. what I'm going to say. Anything that goes longer than it needs to is an Oppenheimer, which is shit. So uh, well, I'll um, take I, I adored on that. This. Oppenheimer was great. Oh, I thought it went too long. But um, a really good a really good time frame, a great behind the scenes of what can happen yes. um, when you're trying to get that interview. It was brilliant, really, really good. That's what I would watch this uh, this uh, week, uh, Mocky. So you just watched Scoop? Okay, well, you don't say that because I've also watched like the I mean, well done, Robbo. You've just Rock. watched Scoop. No, no, okay. and I also watched Chicago Med, but all of these all of these shows I keep sure. watching. So that's the newest one. Right. I'm working my way through these other ones. So I just thought I'd, you know, short and sweet. That's how right. I do it. That's great. And, and look, I'll keep it reasonably short and sweet as well. I could take full advantage of this situation, but that would only heap uh, burning coals, and I don't want to do that. The two shows that I'm going to talk about for my TV binge box tonight, one of which you may guess slash may not guess, and that is Married at First Sight Season 11. It finished up last night, and no question on Nine, that is available now on Nine now in its entirety, uh, no question it ruled the roost. Like for most nights, it was 800 to a million viewers ahead of its nearest rival. It's still That's amazing. Like it's got phenomenal years. money, right? And everyone talks about it. Just it's and, and that's the thing. The interesting thing, so why, Robert, right? It's, this is a question we ask. Why do so many people watch Married at First Sight? And I think it's a combination. The reason I watch it as much as anything is because, A, as a commentator, I need to be able to talk about it. B, I am addicted to the drama, like the completely confected in some cases, drama of who did what to whom and how all of the things played out, fine. And at the same time, and and this is where I think we start to hook in other people, fuck, I'm glad that's not me. Like I'm very, (laughs) very happily married. You know, I'm married now to, to my glorious wife for, what are we, 23? This is my 12th year of wedded bliss. No, 22nd, shit. 22nd year of wedded bliss. Yeah, and I love her deeply. Yeah. And if she was to pass or hang me out to dry and leave, I'm going to die as that the man funny. who attempted to download all, all of the internet porn because I just oh, couldn't face. I just couldn't face dating. Sorry. If this is what dating is, I just couldn't stare that down. That would be yeah, horrendous. No. Sorry, that just made me sweat. I broke into a sweat there. Sorry. Right, so yeah, much going go. wrong in all of that. Yeah. Same that I said, and I apologize. <laughs> um, the 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 difficulty around maths is eight, we are on season 11 just finished Robbo. It's been on air for 11 years. It's amazing. For the first couple of years, it was a bit of an interesting thing, bit of its own thing. And then they have refined it, refined it and turned it into the monster that it is. Honestly, for the last five years, I've watched the entire season and gone, I don't know how they can do better or like be more outrageous, not better, but more dramatic, more outrageous, more crazy than this. And each year, mate, 
each I year. The past three years, I've gone to their, you know, season sneaky peak launch at the first episode thing and had the chance to speak to particularly John Aiken and, and the, the EP responsible for making the show. And I've said this each year, I just don't know how you do it. Like each year ago, that's it. You're done. It's not any better than this or crazier than this. And each year, you guys turn it on its head and they go, wait until you see this year. And they're mm. fucking right. Every time, it's Look, stupid how crazy there's no, it is. There's no shortage of trash in this country, Malky, and they are very happy to get in front of the camera. Oh, but, but that's what we're learning more and more. And even, even down to the point where in the past years, we've – please go with me on the use of the word legitimate in this. Yes. We've legitimately had cheating scandals where partner A oh, yeah. in this relationship and partner B in this relationship have hooked up quietly and turned into new couple, right? That we've actually had what we would understand to be proper cheating. This year, nobody hooked up with anybody else while they were on the show. Mm. Like there was, uh, and I appreciate that emotional cheating is still cheating. Like don't, I don't want to discount that. Yeah. Certainly an allegation around that for Jono and Ellie. Mm-hmm. If you know who those names are, friends, you're as sad as I am. Um, <laughs> but but the, the diff- there was there was there was just legitimately people struggling in their stuff together. Anyway, Married at First Sight, just flipping outrageous. All right, Mocky. If you want to check Here's your up and down mocks, mate. Well, Come no, on. the other show that I'm going to say is my the other one, Friends, Friday morning, um, Taskmaster UK season 17 is playing out on Binge. It's just great. It's just great. Greg Davies and um, uh, Little Alex him. Horn, again, for the 17th season, are delivering amazing things. For those that are waiting for the Australian series, season two and now season three are filmed and in the can. Brilliant. Good. Season two is about to come out on 10. Season three, I would hope they will deliver to us later this year. That's Taskmaster Australia. Uh, but season 17 of Taskmaster UK is brilliant, phenomenal, so worth the while. And you don't have to watch it season to season to know what's going on. Correct, you can yeah. just jump in and best to start on episode one of a season, but you can jump in at any point and just go, oh, I get this show. It's stupid and I love it because yeah. it is stupid and I love it. <laughs> it's delightful. <laughs> uh, a quick up, Mulk. American Rust season two on Prime Video is really worth it. Uh, that's a big up, Mulk. And I'll throw at you Clarkson's Farm. Season two, brought to you by Prime Video as well, friends. Really? Season three of Clarkson's Farm, the third and final season, is about yeah. to drop. I think it's in two weeks' time. I've yeah. seen the first couple of eps. Stands and applauds at just how much of a buffoon Jeremy Clarkson is and is willing to work. Mm. It's what it oh, is. Look, you know, Mulkey, thanks so much for your time. This oh, morning, look, hey, uh, thanks for your evening. time, Robo. It's yeah, great to be here. To, yeah, great to have you. Um, where can we go? I'm just trying to think of what's the end of this. Where can people get uh, – where the, the people in the industry get their news? Yes. Look, they can go to tvblackbox.com.au Fantastic. and all of our relevant socials, but certainly yeah. the website, tvblackbox.com.au. That's tvblackbox.com.au, TV TV the place oh, where wow. the TV industry get, get their, their news. news. Yeah. We've got exclusives. We've got podcasts, yep. singular. We've got um, <laughs> stories. We've got all Before of the I... latest things that is playing out. And let me tell you, you may even want to turn out sometime this week to see what the hell happens with the podcast because even I don't know at this point. Rob, it's, it's been great so to have exciting. you. And we've got to get to the late news. So, uh, yes, Malkin, Sandra Sully's warming it up. That's right. She's waiting to go. Good to see you, everybody. Bye, everyone.